all right everybody welcome to another episode of film fanfic so this is another guest episode and today i have my friend Kyrie parker who i've known since high school how's yes, it going hello. Kyrie? hold on i'm fine <laughs> on this wonderful afternoon uh better now because you know i love talking about filmmaking as you know good i am glad because so do i and let's do it let's talk about film um <laughs> yeah we actually start we got to know each other through drama class in high school yeah yeah i i got to know you more as an actor first yeah and, from, and foremost which is kind of weird <laughs> you were directing uh, me <laughs> yeah 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 it was for and and I had never really like thought about directing plays. I don't think that ever like struck me. Sometimes you speak to filmmakers and they kind of like teeter totter between the idea of both, but like it never, it never crossed my mind. And then I think we had, what was her name? I just, oh my God, a hundred points for you. If you could remember, was it Miss, Miss Bot? Miss Bot, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Ms. Bot. she was super dope and most English teachers are. And um, yeah, I think she, she told everyone to pick a script or something. We we should well well we we wrote it was either write a script or pick one, and some people I wrote my the it because we were doing no let two. me hear yours I want to hear yours <laughs> <laughs> which one did, which one did you pick I'm curious I don't think I've ever no, asked I, you that I wrote one I didn't pick one um, okay all right yeah. so I want to hear the concept we did, we did two we were gonna do two plays um, yeah so the script couldn't be too long. And I think mine was about 50 something pages, 40 <laughs> to 50 something pages. And it was, it was just a high school drama. Like it was serious. It was a couple of high school friends. One was dealing with suicidal tendencies. The other one was dealing with, I don't remember what, probably love, heartbreak. I don't know. But um, she said it was great. It's just that it was too long. It was too long. So we didn't end up using it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah um I, the assignment i guess was to either write and, and pick a script and then that would go ahead and we would kind of start production mm -hmm. on making it an actual thing and i guess what really, what really struck out to me because um again didn't think i'd be directing a play but it was the writing aspect of it and i thought it was cool that we could possibly pick something and have it be turned into something big so i remember i picked one and it was she picked mine and another girl's in class and with mine she really liked the concept but they were like it was like really dirty material i don't think you i don't think the class got to read the like original version i think she just told everyone that she picked one or picked two and so the version that i picked was really good it just had some r-rated like there's a lot of like sex stuff like sex, like sex <laughs> jokes in there so she actually told me she's just like yo if you could like you know rewrite it a little bit then we could actually use this. So I ended up like cleaning it up, you know? And um, since we are talking about like the, the filmmaking process and how you got to where, be where you are, I feel like that was actually one of the, the moments. It's funny you brought up high school because at that moment I directed a play and, you know, to, to hear people like enjoy something that I had a part of writing, I think was like one of the first moments that I actually like fell in love with it. So yeah, I mean, you might oh, so, you, you guys got us onto something there. <laughs> so you're you're a key, you're a piece in in this in this big puzzle, Christian. I feel honored. <laughs> yeah, man, you should. Um, and I actually, I do love that play. I still have it saved on my on my Facebook. <laughs> oh, can you download that? Or actually, I'll yeah. just look at your Facebook. That you can I do that, seen that as well. So <laughs> well, I mean, you actually might want it though. I mean, I I even though it's not downloaded onto anything, but I I I feel like I have it. You know. Yeah, I I remember I, you know every the Facebook does like ten years ago. Here's a post. Yeah. So that picture of us in the cast and you pops up every once in a while. <laughs> that was that was a fun play to to yeah to, it to was act it was a, um, a fun experience. Um, before I go into your amazing acting skills oh and God. the role that you had, <laughs> <laughs> do you all right? So the other girl, I don't think I knew the other girl's play that I got chosen. I don't think I knew her that much, you know. I don't think a lot of people did, but I don't know if you can remember back. Do you do you know what the fuck that was about that play? Like I remember sitting there, like, yo, what yeah. is this? Like a caterpillar and Madonna yeah. was involved. I was so, like, what is this? <laughs> it was about uh yeah, a dancing cat caterpillar, which I played. <laughs> I, I oh, played. Is it. that right? 
Yeah. <laughs> that's kind of interesting uh, credentials right there. You know, that's in my resume, Dancing Caterpillar. Because, <laughs> um, you know, I, I had uh, the... I, the wave, I could do the wave really well with my body. She saw something in you. It, yeah, and it was just about a caterpillar who became famous for being a dancing caterpillar. But uh, it it wasn't... It, <laughs> yeah, that one was a little wonky. Um, but it was fun to be dancing, though. I got <laughs> to show true. off a little bit. But in your play, I was... Uh, a man who turned into a dog so yeah. well i mean there's more context behind that i thought the role <laughs> was actually very interesting all right so for anybody who's listening uh my play was about this guy that just was sick of his life he actually walks into another house and decides to take that family and make it a part of his life so uh chris wells who i think still acts i think he does a lot i follow his ig he's like a just everything <laughs> dance instructor like it just does it all have you seen his uh, music videos <laughs> no i haven't i haven't i must have missed that yeah but, at uh, least one yeah. he, he tries to like like kind of move in as the new husband and you play the 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 now husband the the the, uh, the, the husband that the wife has at the moment and yeah. you kind of are forced into this new life and you slowly turn into the the family dog <laughs> it's, a, it's a cuckold situation i'm terribly yeah, yeah. wrong <laughs> <laughs> for me <laughs> and um it, the yo know, the entire experience was was really cool um and it was something that i ended up doing again too and um a little more intense but yeah the it, just the whole process of it was very interesting and just to hear people like laugh at something i wrote was like like really cool and that was like one of the moments that like like sparked yeah. it off for me i feel like and so so then before that you because I, I feel from the conversations we've had that you've liked film for a long, long time. But before that, have you really had uh, a desire to tell stories like this? Um, I I think so. I think in a way, it's like one of those things that like you don't realize was always there. It was kind of like I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know about you. I don't know how like frequently you played with action figures. But when I had action figures <laughs> when I was a kid, like they needed storylines. They couldn't yeah. just like Hulk couldn't just meet fucking Daredevil and they just fight out like no why are they meeting you know so I yeah. think like consciously I was always like doing that like I was very always like imaginative always looking out the window can't focus that was always me so I guess in a way that is storytelling you're constantly like making these things happen in your head it's just that I guess when I became a, a, a teenager I was like oh well, let me just start writing stuff down because this is interesting to me <laughs> you know. Mm. So to answer your question, yeah, I think I think it's just kind of one of those things that's just always there. And then when you got to direct a play that sparked the interest in directing something or or so it was was it mostly writing yeah, that you were yeah. doing before? Uh, yeah, it was mostly writing. Um, I remember when I was 15, I like discovered Saturday Night Live. And I just thought the idea of just like writing sketches was really cool. And so not even telling people, I would just like, just write like sketches, like sketch comedy, like all the time and shit. And um, I guess before then, like, I don't know if, if you felt the same way, but as a kid, because I, I come from like a TV family, like that's all we did. We don't even really like, like speak about our emotions and shit. It's just like the television is just on. on. But um I would I would pay attention to like shots. I'd be like, I wasn't just sitting there in the movie. I'd be like, all right, all right, how did they get that shot? Or like, how long mm -hmm. did that take? You know, so more attention than others were. So, mm -hmm. um, and I discovered that too when I went to NYFA when I was around, I think 15 or 16. And uh, I was finally around some other people that were kind of like me. So it all made sense. It was like, it was like Xavier's school for like the, the gifted, <laughs> like, like, excellent. like I, I knew that like I was weird for a reason. Sorry for all the Marvel references, people that are listening, but uh, yeah. <laughs> What's Marvel? No, I'm <laughs> <laughs> that would be real. I'd, I'd just leave. <laughs> well, that's cool. Um, nice. And and so now these days you because i know you well so i've known you've done a lot of sketches too um like presented them as plays but then you also have a youtube channel 
do you still feel like you you want to direct more film stuff or are you more interested in directing plays as well and if so how would you see them being different oh my god the process is so different i the last play that i directed it was a lot more intense and i don't know if you remember with miss bot she was kind of there like guiding us along the way i didn't get that at all it was uh it was at my college it was the first run student play in like 11 12 years what? so it was kind of an accomplishment in that way yeah. we weren't getting paid no one was getting paid so these are just people that you have to entrust in friends of yours that like it was a lot of like oh i'll be there in 20 minutes and then they come like an hour later it was just a lot of rehearsals um it was just a very like it was a neil simon play called seven minutes in heaven and um mm. it was a lot it was tough there was no like contractual agreements it was all just trusting in people getting there and knowing their lines and um we had three showings and the first one was like amazing it was like actually one of the greatest feelings it's almost like graduating high school just like that same feeling and uh it's just all that work and you've got to get to finally i don't know i guess i get a high on watching other people enjoy something that i had a part of because just like being backstage and like seeing that it all work out was really was really cool and the second showing one of our actresses messed up a line and it was like it's like nails on a chalkboard it, it, it mm -hmm. seemed like it lasted so long and it was an important and, uh, one. she got it she got the play yeah, it was very, it was, it was a scene that like was so hard. And that was another thing. Like, I guess I'm saying all this because the process and making plays like so much different in a way it's, it's so much harder because like you can't approach like a scene the same way. Like everyone has to know their line. Like there's mm -hmm. no shots that you can cut. There's no other angles. It's just like a sh just dead on, dead on shot the entire time. So your actresses, actors' performances are really important. Whereas in film, you can kind of cheat it a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, it was it was really grueling. Like the thing that I learned the most was with film. You know, an actor can study a scene you know, for four days and you shoot it, it takes a couple of days to shoot and then that's it, it's gone. You don't have to really return to that scene ever again. Of course, if you wanna do some reshoots and whatever, but with plays, it's like, we spent like six months just practicing the same scene, you know? And I, I at first I could, I could not understand why because the first, you know, couple of times you do it, you're like, oh, it's perfect. But no, it's not perfect. You have to work on that until it is like fine tuned. And that's what it really, I guess, patience flies, like doing plays. You have to have a lot of patience. It's, it's way different. And so you're, you're basically fine tuning. Oh, if that actor stepped wrong, fix it. Give him that note. It's a lot of notes. And I think that probably I became better at too, giving notes because I'm looking more in detail because I'm doing it so often. So hmm. in a way it helps. But the only way that I would return to doing a play, like legitimately, like is if I was paid. It was, it was very rough. Mm. And I imagine like it also has to be all that rehearsing because you're doing the whole story, right, in, in that one evening. So you need that muscle memory pretty much. Yep. It has yep. you have to remember everything in scene one and scene two and scene three. So you got to do it over and over again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, it's very, uh, it's, it's, it's a lot mentally and creatively. Okay. So you'd only do it if you got paid the big bucks. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I, I think the way that I see myself making movies in the future, what my style is sort of becoming from just movies that I like, um, it's, it's, it's a lot of wonders and blocking. So playing the whole scene out as a shot and then blocking it. Okay. So... I'm, it's not going to be the constant rehearsal. Uh, I mean, I mean, it's not going to have that same exact quality of we got to remember all of this because we're going to do it in front of an audience live, you know, three nights in a row type of feel, however many nights in a row. Because there's still, if you mess up, you can do another take. But it still would suck to do the whole thing and then you mess up right at the end. It's like, God. <laughs> 
I just, uh, I think it's kind of interesting that you are choosing that style. Like, yeah. I guess in a way there's two types of people. There's, you know, that stuff just comes to them or they actually like, uh, approach a style and like, all right, I, that's what I have envisioned in my head rather than just like blindfully seeing what comes of it. So I think that's kind of interesting. Yeah. I, uh, when I, before I sit down to even write a script, the whole movie's already edited in my head to music mm-hmm. and everything. Um, so I know how I want it to look, which sometimes I get nervous that that's going to be dangerous for me i think it's a cool thing to have that to already know what the film looks like but dangerous in that how open am i going to be to you know (laughs) changes and recommendations (laughs) um because you never know you're someone else is always you're you're i i don't like to think that i'm the smartest person in the room even though um sometimes i may argue like i am (laughs) (laughs) but um uh, so if you could name a film that is sort of reflection of your style, what would that film be? Wow. I'm liking these questions. Um, keep in mind, these are all like freestyle. If I really got like a, if, I, if you gave me a month to think about these questions, I'd have <laughs> Man, better answers. Five like, seconds, five. <laughs> right now, five seconds. As immature as it sounds, I would have to say like, have faith because I think Chappelle is like one of my idols and that's just like a it's like a mix a mix I'm starting to I really like how like the colors are so vibrant and and kind of bold and the humor is very sharp and witty but like a lot of people don't don't really take it seriously it's kind of like a surprise less less on the whole like pie head shit but just like its approach as a comedy I think I want that to be my style for friends getting out of something and it's just it's just very witty i like that i think those are like my favorite types of movies coming of age even though they're grown men but (laughs) but yeah like something like that i think coming of age is never limited to teenage years because we're always evolving into our new selves oh that makes Um, me feel better (laughs) so i i that's yeah i i you know i found a I was going through my old Yahoo email yesterday or two days ago, and I found a lot of drafts that I was sending to you, um, <laughs> the scripts that we worked on. Yo, um, so right, I know we're about to we're about to take this. We've <laughs> actually we've we've worked on like a few things. They might have not like uh, come into flourish flourishing. I think is how you say the word fruition. Yeah. Yeah, I always get tongue tied on that. Um, but yeah, we've worked on a few things. But yeah, no, go ahead with what you're about to say. Yeah, and our, our latest, I, I'm, I'm glad that we did finally actually turn one of our scripts into something. Yeah, um, finally, right? Right. But the the one that I'm talking about was like, this, what's, what do we call Stan the Man? <laughs> it was a high school yeah, drama. Yeah, yeah. Um, it was uh, nice nights like these. Nights like, I really... I, I think that was a, a, a fun script, fun story. And, you know, I'm, let's make it sometime. I think. <laughs> yeah, no, I would, I would really, I would really love that. And I don't know if it's one of those things, cause it's, it's, it's one of those things that like, it's, I think it has always just been there kind of just, just on my computer. And I, I think like, if I were to return to it, I don't know if I, I don't know if you think the same way too. I don't know if I would do it how it's written or I'd want to add even more context to it because I, I think it's one of those things like if you read it now the most recent version I don't know what version you're looking at it's very like it's very contained it's like it's like boom 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 and it's over and I love mm-hmm. that but like I would also love to like add so much more to that and make it like a full coming of age like teen movie I uh, originally like when I was growing up John Hughes was like my idol. Like I, mm. even on my my Twitter, I'm, I don't even use Twitter, but when I did, like fucking six years ago, my um, it's still in my bio. It's a black John Hughes because as a teenager, that's always what was my intent, like to tell teenage stories, but like to make them black stories or like black and Spanish stories. Yeah. So embody what he was doing for the '80s, except be that guy for this new generation. You know, 
And and you know we could always make the short film version and use that as a way to pitch a feature film. Yeah, exactly. I think that uh, Owen Wilson and Luke Wilson did that with uh, Bottle Rocket. I think it actually was like a like a smaller project, and they they redid it like almost like identical. It seemed like, and they actually got on and put put them both on in a way. But yeah, no, that's that's really cool that you want to revisit something like that. I actually, I liked, I enjoyed. Um, I don't know if you remember one of the earlier ones we did, uh, Spoof Night too. Yeah, that that I came across that one too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was just like a parody of just everything ridiculous in horrors. I always, every time, if you notice, like I, I, I try to like connect because I know you were the horror guy, so I always try to find something that like the best of both our like our talents and stuff. So there's like mm-hmm. a bunch of uh, different things that I'm sure we've sent, sent each other over the past. That's funny. I remember spoof night. I remember we kind of wrote it specifically for Jesus's our friend, his house. Um, <laughs> yeah. I would still like to film there. I think it was a cool house. If I, it, I'm thinking like in terms of lighting the house, I would like to work in a house like that. I felt like there was a lot of ways that I could light, um from the outside in so that way we don't have to worry about putting all these lights inside the room and trying to hide him um because his deck and and also i just think he had really interesting rooms and uh like that office and it had this the doors with the glass windows yeah i mean i i think if we were to ever revisit any script there would definitely be nights like these and i would that would be like the perfect house for that and also I kind of feel like I don't know if your relationship with him is the same but it's like the years with him grew stronger when he like was officially like staying downstairs and shit yeah. so it's almost like this whole other portion of the house that I didn't even get to know you know because we were just in the basement but like upstairs like the just how it's the, the high ceiling like I love all that mm-hmm. yeah Maybe one day. I, I heard his parents, he told me his parents moved back to PA, but I don't know if they moved back into that house. Um, but maybe we, we could, could yeah, pay them we one day too. Okay. Yeah. But uh, the, so the two movies, the two movies that you mentioned, Half Baked by Dave Chappelle, and what was the other one with Owen Wilson? Uh, Bottle Rocket, but that Bottle wasn't Rocket. one of my choices. That was just an example of two uh, I guess they were both actors at the time. It's almost like a Matt Damon. Uh, yeah. Um, what's the other guy? Uh, ben. I don't know. Matt, Matt, Matt Damon. Ben Affleck. Ben Affleck. Yeah. They, they just, wrote the script. They created it. And, and, and no, I was I was just saying those two movies that you mentioned, and I haven't seen them. So. Oh, interesting. To look um, well, if you're familiar with the show on my block on Netflix, that's also like stylistic wise. I would want my approach to be. So if you haven't seen these, uh, you better you better get to it, mister. Oh, okay. I'm waving my finger right now. <laughs> <laughs> if you can tell. All right, I'll, uh, I'll get to that. On on my blog, I, it's something I wanted to check out for a while now. Yeah, it's, it's very... It, it's very good in a sense that, like, it's very real. It captures the black and Spanish experience. And it's not just a comedy, like it's very, very intense, dramatic moments that I didn't expect from that show, but it also like made it so much better. So I think it would really surprise you. It surprised me too. It, it does come off a little corny in Netflix, but once you get into it, it's it's re- really good. Especially if you want to get to know my style for your podcast, like look at that show. Okay, I'll do that. I'll do that. So, when I asked you what film you wanted to talk about for this episode, you said Dr. Sleep. And to be honest, I was surprised that <laughs> you chose Dr. Sleep. Um, I just didn't see it coming, but I think it's a great choice. Uh, it's a film that I really liked. I watched it again last night. Um, why did you choose Dr. Sleep? Um, that's... Uh, I'm. I'm a, I'm glad that I surprised you with that, but at the same time, I'm surprised that you don't remember that we've had a few conversations about Stephen King's, I guess, film adaptations and stuff, and my love for The Shining. I think The Shining is like probably one of the greatest horror movies ever. I think that this, the horror movies that they're making now don't even touch Shining in, in any bit. Um, but yeah, I chose that because that was something that I watched recently, and 
I don't know if you're the same way, but it's hard for me these days to really get into something. There's always just like a lot of hype surrounding it. I like to let things die down a little bit when the culture is not upset, so obsessed with it. Because I think it came out like legit a year ago. And I think I just sat down to watch it. It was hard for me because um, sequeling something that great is uh, is hard. I, I think mm-hmm. it's, it's a terrible idea to do, but I kind of liked how this one separated itself in a sense. And I guess that's why I chose it because I both very, I, I both enjoyed it and didn't like it at the same time. Oh, wow. And this is you asking me this. So I definitely wanted to get something that I knew you watched, you know, and that we could <laughs> both talk about that could both like, that could be interesting for, for us. And yeah. I don't know, it, it surprised me and it, it disappointed me in some ways. And I, I guess that's why I wanted to, talk about it oh yeah no i i I think it came out 2019 because i remember i was still able to go to the movie theaters um dr sleep for those who don't know is uh well like uh, Kyrie was saying a sequel to the shining which is a stephen king novel that was adapted into film by stanley kubrick kubrick the great stanley kubrick am i saying that correctly I should know how to say Stanley Kubrick's name by now. The um, last, just now, the way you said it at that time, that was perfect. <laughs> we'll see. I'm sure we'll get some comments now. Um, yeah, and then Stephen King in 2013 published Dr. Sleep, the sequel to his novel, The Shining. And now we're getting a film adaptation, or well, we got one a couple, 2019, a film adaptation from director Mike Flanagan, who also directed... The series on Netflix, uh, Haunt, The Haunting of Hill House and The Haunting of Bly Manor, that series. He also did Oculus. Uh, surprise! Uh, do you remember the film, the horror film uh, Ouija? Yeah, I do remember that. I remember that was one of those like, you know, I don't know if you like it or you hate it or not. If you do like it, I'm about to offend you. It just... It seemed like one of those like Friday nights, like yeah. with your friends at the it, mall, like not really paying attention to the screen type horrors. It definitely was. Um, <laughs> didn't care for it. But Mike Flanagan directed the sequel to that one, which I thought I was like, why? But at the same time, not surprised because money, you know, a movie like that still makes money because you have all those teenagers going to see it. Um, the sequel I actually liked. And I think Mike Flanagan is a good director. And he definitely has a style that I've noticed, uh, especially in terms of cinematography. Not that he does the cinematography for his film, um, for his movies and things like that. But uh, visually, I can tell, oh, this is a Mike Flanagan movie. Um, I could really see it in Doctor Sleep. I felt like I was watching the Hill House series again. Uh, Dr. Sleep, yeah, I, I really liked it. It's a sequel of The Shining, but it's also, it takes from The Shining movie instead of, so I think they, well, I know they changed the last act of the, of the story to take place in the Overlook Hotel, which is where, you know, our story begins with The Shining in this grand haunted hotel. And it's different from the book because in the book... That hotel doesn't exist anymore because in the original The Shining, the book, that hotel was burned down at the end, but not in the movie. So I heard that Mike Flanagan was unsure how Stephen King was going to take it. And I think he said that he wouldn't have made the film if he didn't get Stephen King's blessing. But he gave Stephen King the script to read. And was just nervous as hell that he wasn't going to give this blessing because he was, at least for the last act, he was taking, he was going off of the continuity of the film version of The Shining as opposed to the novel. And Stephen King is not a fan, to say the least, of the film version of The Shining. Uh, so Stephen King eventually gave him his blessing after some conversation. Even he thought the script was great, but you know there was always that that that, that last part. You know he was hesitant on, but he gave him his blessing, and they made the movie. And I think great. I think the movie was great. There's also a director's cut, which was because the movie's long. It's two and a half hours, and then the director's cut is three hours. 
uh, and I saw last night the director's cut. I'm not really sure what they added from some quick reading. It seems like they just made some scenes longer rather than adding new scenes. Yeah. But um, yeah, I thought I thought it was. I like Mike Flanagan's horror style. I think because he's not very uh, in your face vroom, type of scare. You know, he. I mean, he has moments like that, but I feel more of the tension, the buildup, or just the quiet horror. For example, there's a scene where our main character, Dan, walks into a room. Um, and I guess at that moment, we're expecting a, a ghost or a jump scare. And instead, it just cuts to uh, the shadow of a, of a ghost by the curtains. But there's no room sound. It's just, it's just a cut. And it looks eerie. And I love I love when it's like that, when the director could sort of restrain himself, you know, from being so loud and bombastic in that way. Very rare to find these days, too. It, yeah, it is. So I always latch on to those kind of horror films. Um, but I'm interested to see why you liked and didn't like it. Um, before before I say that, so just, this, just so I'm clear, um, what happens in... Stephen King's Doctor Sleep. Like, is there no? They don't return to the hotel at all. The book. No. Well, so the book goes. I, there are moments where they uh, they go into the hotel, but it's not real because the hotel actually doesn't exist anymore. So they're right. in. I think they're. I I have. Oh, I don't. I think they were in a cabin somewhere. Um, I think they were in an abandoned like building of some sort or house. In the woods, or in the, at the or at the top of a mountain, they were at the top of a mountain, and um, and it was they they revisited the hotel, but through hallucinations. If I'm right, which is kind of somewhat what they do in the movie as well, too. They do that in the movie periodically, I guess, with fl- maybe some flashbacks. But at the end, they actually go to the hotel. And yeah, yeah, that yeah. couldn't have happened in Stephen King's version unless he created some story about the hotel rebuilding itself because it's a haunted hotel, which Stephen King fashion, I wouldn't put that past him. <laughs> but he didn't do that. The hotel was still burnt down in his version. So they were just sort of transported into the hotel through, I guess, hallucinations or something like that. And when in this case, they actually visited the actual hotel and then it got burned down at oh spoiler alert <laughs> yeah, yeah. <clears throat> i uh, i'm actually surprised uh stephen king was he okay to not not because of how i feel about it but because of the whole controversy sur- surrounding the shining like like mm-hmm. like you said like one of his like most most hated adaptations of anything of his work so much so that he made his own in the 90s yeah know? yeah exactly yeah and like and then it, it was like bad <laughs> which i thought was like so like stanley Q- kubrick kubrick oh now you got me saying it crazy stanley <laughs> kubrick couldn't have like had the last laugh any harder than than that <laughs> um but yeah man like i guess from just the outside looking in like I told you all, like, I guess the reserves I had about watching it, you know, it's obviously a sequel of something that I love. So, but the fact that giving itself a different name, I think in some way was separating itself from the shining, which I thought was really good because it did kind of feel like its own thing. It didn't, you didn't really need to watch the shining. I don't see why the fuck you wouldn't, but <laughs> you didn't need to watch the shining in order to enjoy this. Um, I thought that it was I because I didn't I didn't read any of the books. This is just from a movie standpoint. I from outside looking in, it just seems like a boy who is grown up now and is um, dealing with the traumatic events that happened to him years prior at a haunted hotel. That's just what the trailer like told me. Mm-hmm. And I guess by the first few scenes, I was like really shocked because I didn't think that it would jump so so eagerly into it and you just saw it last night so you're a little more like you know in tune but i haven't i haven't seen it in a couple of weeks but i guess what really impressed me about the movie is how like effortless it was to revisit some of these like huge moments 
in The Shining. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, they redid the shot with the, the boys, obviously, like, uh, like riding the bike on the carpet and you get to like see that again and hear that noise. And then he stops in front of that room, you know, and I think I'm pretty sure because they did it a lot. That was a well, of course, it'd be a different boy, but it looked like a shot. Like they actually used the same footage from the movie. So I'm not really sure like I how know, they pulled that off, but it was really great. They, I know they did with, um, with the scene where they at towards the end when they're driving back to the hotel and then the the imp, the the famous music from The Shining comes up, yeah, yeah. and they're doing the sweeping camera motions as we're going over the lake and the mountains. And I heard they reused the actual shots from the original Shining film, and they just made it look like it was night and added more snow. I think. Um, wow. But for those other ones, yeah, they had to reshoot it because it was different actors that they were. Using. Yeah. yeah. So like i i don't know i mean and they're they're getting really good these days like you know stuff if you watch like rogue one star wars rogue one how they were able to recreate some of the characters from the past like carrie fisher and stuff like that so they're getting really good with like bringing people back and stuff like that and just making things feel like you're actually there and i don't know i was just really impressed because i actually felt like i was there watching the first one and it, it was just it was a really great way to introduce you know, a movie like that, especially to fans, to put you right back there. And I knew that it would attempt things like that, but I didn't think it would be done so well. And just like the actor performances, like the, the actress that played um, the mom from the first one and just her mannerisms, everything was like so on point. There's so many reboots and sequels of things where they try to reference or just try to like grab something from the past and i just felt like this was unique and refreshing because it it felt like it was coming from a place of like like love and like not a cash grab yes. or like nothing that was trying to harm the original it was like i feel like this was legit made for shining fans and no one else like it wasn't trying to get new people in it was just like oh this is for you and like even like the scenes following that, I thought, all right, you know, they're going to open up with this scene that takes place in the prior movie. And then he's going to wake up in bed, like on some like night terror, like, <laughs> you know, like that was it. But no, it's like a few scenes that you're watching kind of like the events that follow. Yeah. They, they really build. Yeah, exactly. Just like the atmosphere and the clothes he was wearing again, the actors and just to see him talking to, um, the black dude from the first one was really dope because it's just like you know and i thought that was i always thought that scene was a little fucked up and i know a lot of people did but i know in the book that character lives a little longer but in the first movie uh the movie version with stanley kubrick he dies like instantly as soon as he gets to the hotel and <laughs> I, I think a lot of people especially black people were mad at that moment you know and to see that his character gets to make a return and have more dialogue and more like girth built into that was like really exciting you know and again the actor that they chose was perfect so yeah. the first like i don't know i would say probably solid 10 15 minutes of the film because we're revisiting these elements in in a way that it doesn't feel forced or like you know trying too hard was just really great for me and that's why i really enjoyed that aspect of the movie and Ewan McGregor is also like one of my favorite actors uh I I, I really I, I don't know if you feel the same too but I really hate when they choose like big names to play like iconic people that really don't need to like you know but I feel like Ewan McGregor is like kind of like position and all this he's not really a household name so him being Danny from the first one kind of made sense and he's actually like he's a really good actor so I was all on board, you know, they need some type of familiar face. So I'm glad it was him. And um, yeah, I think as far as me liking things, I would have to stop there in a sense because, and I know you and I know the stuff that you like, I think from here, the movie kind of takes a little bit of a turn because now it, it's focusing on this girl that like, I don't, I, I think I remember the first scene is she's not even involved. It's like a little kid, an, another boy, and he, he can shine as well. And basically the antagonists of the films are, of the film are these people, like these almost like circus folk that eat or kill people who can shine. Mm -hmm. 
And so I thought the scene with the little boy was interesting. I was like, okay, all right. You know, it's kind of like a little bit of like it in there. Like they feed off that shit. But I guess I hated how the movie, like, I don't know if trivialize is, a, is, a, is the right word, but they, The Shining was a horror where I feel like this was more like a, um, I don't know. It just, it, it, I feel like they took a lot of elements from the movie Push or like X-Men just finding people and oh you know you know oh you have superpowers too okay well, we're gonna come get you and we're gonna kill. like I've seen that a lot I've seen that too many mm -hmm. places where The Shining was more like a ghost story this movie didn't feel like a ghost story I felt like any moments that we spent not with Ewan McGregor was kind of weird it felt like they were trying something new and I, I love it when they try things new but I just don't think that this was the right direction it, it became more of like a sarah connor trying to you know make sure her son doesn't get like the terminators don't find the kid and kill him and like ewan mcgregor's like pr protecting this little girl because she shines too and i kind of <laughs> like how the first one kind of like it's just the black dude and and the little boy that can shine there isn't this whole like world of people that we know yeah can shine i think they, they they give it like different names all of a sudden all of a sudden there's people that like can smell shiners or can like see the future and see shiners i'm like all right you're it's too much it's too much like like fantasy now and like majesticness added to it like all these circus folk it, it just it seemed like it was doing a lot in that aspect so anything away from that original kind of grounded feeling i didn't really like but 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 when we returned to the hotel at the end, I was like, you know, it's it's elements like that that I really enjoyed how things were flipped. It was now you and McGregor at the bar, you know, mm -hmm. talking to the bartender. It was like the same shot, but he was also dealing with the trauma and just alcoholism. I loved all of that. Like the scene where um the main antagonist chick, she's coming up the stairs with the ax, you know, and it's like Ewan McGregor and the little girl now, like stuff like that. Moments where they're paying homage. I, I think I love the, the, the best, but anything other than that just seems like I've, I've seen it before, like so many other times. But uh, for instance, I thought like the, when they, that scene where they, all the characters from the first one, all the ghosts are like eating her or trying to attack her you know, all at once, like that was, that was really good. So it's kind of, it's kind of like I'm on the fence. That's the stuff I really liked about it and the stuff I, I didn't really like about it. So you'd like half of that film. Could you agree that this could have been two separate movies? Because that's what I was feeling the whole time. I think the movie, especially for Shining fans, would have done just as well with what I said, where the movie kind of opens up and he just... He's like, all right, yo, I'm I'm going back. I'm going back to the hotel. And then I guess I'm kind of I'm, I'm saying that because I feel like the best moments are us seeing Danny dealing with his his trauma. Everything else yeah. was just kind of like I wasn't emotionally invested because I'm I'm getting to know this little girl just for the first time. You know, I'm getting to know this villain from the first time. But you're also trying to attract me to a past feeling and emotion. It's like we're going back and forth between you and McGregor and the girl. I just feel like they could have just either done without Ewan McGregor or maybe had him come at the very end and it would have been like, oh shit, Danny, you know, instead of revolving the entire movie around Danny and then the, the, the little girl is like featured. I, I guess there's like three different ways they could have did it. One movie, just a little girl, kind of like this new expansion into the Shining theory or just Danny, just all just him. And then, but it, Or, or if they had the both of them, I would have had you and McGregor come at the end because just the mix of them two kind of just felt like it was two separate scripts. But do you feel like you would have liked the movie even less because if, if it was just mostly the girl? Yeah, I would have liked it a lot less because, yeah, if it was mostly the girl, like the only, if it was mostly the girl, I'd be like, okay, this was kind of interesting. 
you know, that they're trying to tie it into the shining. But again, a lot of those elements, you know, just being the only one, the chosen one that can do these things and people are after you. Like I've seen that so many times. So if she was the main character, I'd be sitting there like, okay, this movie wasn't that bad. And then Danny comes in at the end. I'm like, oh man, like it would kind of give it a little more points, but just a girl by herself. Nah, I don't, I don't think if someone knew, like if, if I knew that I was going into that, I probably wouldn't pay money to go see so it. That's, cool that's, elements, but it just wasn't, it wouldn't, it wasn't doing it for me. That's why they did the half and half. Cause they were like, okay, Kyrie is not going to like this film <laughs> yeah, if we just exactly. do the girl, but we can't just do Eva McGregor's because it's going to be a rehash of The Shining. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but would it have been a rehash that way if there was no little girl? Would I? To me, that's just a solid sequel, a solid attempt at a sequel, at least. No, no, you're right because they could have, um, you know, it doesn't have to be him going back to the hotel at all. It just it could still sort of follow. It could it could have been just the the him recovering from that trauma and him trying to get to start this new life, but he keeps being. Um, he keeps running into these ghosts, uh, like that woman in the beginning who he was ha- ha- drinking and doing cocaine with. And then he left her there, took her money, left her there with the baby, and then th- end up, they ended up dying, right? He sees their ghost. Uh, so, and that was creepy, the way that, and, and that was, an, going back to the way he subtly introduces a horror scene, I love that, like, he looks down and he sees her hand around him like when he was sleep- was sleeping there when they were alive and or she was alive um he gets out of bed turns around and then the hand grabs him but anyway so yeah actually i i agree that probably would have been still really interesting and yeah and maybe would have maybe would have been better uh aha uh-huh. so you do <laughs> here we are no no it's cool that like before this conversation you didn't see it that way but now you're kind of like ah, yeah okay. I, I i could see it being that it could be just him it doesn't have to introduce yeah it was kind of like they were trying to pass the torch which i wasn't really like you know like everything about you and mcgregor stuff didn't seem forced where everything with her kind of did feel forced like let's get this like generic mixed girl uh black dude white mom you know curly mm. hair like let's let's sell him on this look this feel because without you and mcgregor we'd probably be taking this route but uh let's pander to the old shining fans a little bit and let's like you know it was just kind of like like that those are its weaker moments when she was i liked her like there was nothing wrong with the the actress or anything it just the attempt was kind of like we're trying to sell you on something you know would you have tried to sell stephen king on making a sequel just on dan torrance's life after the shining because remember the the movie is based off of the sequel that he wrote so stephen king wrote in this extra stuff with abra the girl and you know the the gang of of shining vampires (laughs) I guess. Um, <laughs> so then if you were to make the movie and make it just about Dan Torrance, you'd be removing all of that stuff from the book. How how comfortable would you have been with going to Stephen King and saying, hey, I want to do a sequel of The Shining like you did, but I don't want to make it your book. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't feel comfortable at all. But, you know, I think like Hollywood needs to understand if, if all these elements are like kind of in your way that maybe you should just let it lie mm-hmm. you know it, we don't need we don't we didn't we didn't need this movie as much as the elements that i really did like i don't think it was needed you know yeah. it's a different genre you know i don't think it really added much i, I think a lot of a lot of people who aren't like film people like us probably didn't really even realize it was a shining sequel you know and I think that's why maybe it didn't do so well in the box office. I think critically it did pretty well, but uh, in the box office worldwide, it really didn't make much more money than its budget. And, you know, first of all, it's a long movie. It's two and a half hours. So, and you have, it's really, like you said, just for Shining fans. You know, kind of, you're not going to get a whole lot of, teenagers thinking oh let's go see a two and a half hour movie of a sequel of a movie we never saw because it was way before our time 
Although The Shining was way before our time too, but yeah, we we're just nerds though. <laughs> just going back to the climax when they go back to the hotel, that being a really cool part. I do remember for something that I and initially didn't like, but I kind of like okay. let, let okay. go of we're getting not somewhere. liking it. <laughs> it was <laughs> let me, let me hear. a lot of the callbacks to The Shining. Now in the so beginning, too much. Too much, yeah. In the beginning how they kind of jumped into like that that one scene where he's he goes into the room 237 and sees the the woman yeah that was cool when they redid that and they were like you said it was like really they were intro- reintroducing you to the shining real quick um and then expanding on it because then that scene after not just the conversation between dan and dick the uh it was also this new scene where they're in this new apartment, you know, and it's after the fact. And he goes to the bathroom at night, and that ghost in the bathtub, that old lady, decrepit yeah, the old woman, lady. she's there. Yeah. I thought that was a great, great addition. But um, toward the end, when he's walking through, and even when the antagonist is walking through, and then you have this the shot with the blood coming out of the elevator, it's cool. Like you said, it's cool the way they were able to reshoot it and or you know recreate that scene those image that image and uh and it's a nice callback but at the same time that's when i felt like okay are we now pandering like oh hey remember this and hey remember this part and here you know and it's like let's get on with the story you know (laughs) at the same time it is sort of a love letter to well, at least it seemed like it. it's a love letter, not to Stephen King and what he created, but what Stanley Kubrick created as well, because that is a very influential horror film. Um, so I kind of had to like, I, in the beginning, I just, I felt like, okay, this is not necessary. We don't need to do all this <laughs> nostalgia, you know, memory lane type of stuff, but... uh and it's funny because like those were like my favorite moments, <laughs> but I could definitely see like, and that's why this is such a weird atmosphere we're in right now. And I don't know how long it's going to stay like this, but you know, you've got these, like these projects that are trying to get new audiences, but also appeal to all old audiences. And it's just never, it's never going to really work out. I mean, this did okay, but it's just like a really hard thing to do. Just create a new movie, people. Exactly. Just make a whole fucking new movie. And mm. uh, I don't see what the problem is. Like, I did with this, like, I didn't like how they were trying to make Shining a super a superpower, you know? Like, it was kind of like, oh, you're born with it now. Like, you're like a bunch of people around the world have it. Like, I liked it being more like small or like Danny and, you know, like you said, you Dick know what? And, now that you say that, yeah. I agree. I, it was like uh, like you had mentioned earlier, it's something out of X-Men. Now you have all these mutant powers. Because it wasn't just that they had the shining. It was also they can do different things with them. Yeah, it's you like, know, okay, people, yeah. and they're communicating each other through the, the chalkboard now. And it, it was just like, it was like we're diving into something that really didn't need to be dived into. And now you're yeah. kind of just like making it corny. But this movie, like, trust me, there's so many, so many different properties that that do that same technique and just ruin the series. And I don't think that this ruined it. I just think that it kind of just, you know, it was a love letter and it didn't really need to be made. But, you know, it did an okay job. It was it was a solid, solid movie. I like to do things out of five and I I give it like a solid three. Like it was it was good. Mm -hmm. Would you say like anything about the the director's uh, style or the cinematography, the editing, and was any of that like sort of a saving grace for the parts that you didn't care too much for in terms of story? Yeah, no, I thought it was shot really, really beautifully. Um, And again, uh, just recreating some of those older elements and making them look very sharp and in tune. They were really ballsy too. Like there was like whole scenes of just other actors like playing these actors that we've loved. You know, and it was like very in your face. They didn't like try to do it from the distance. Like I I really probably one of my favorite scenes is when he's talking to Dick on the park bench as a kid. And you're sitting there like, wait, didn't you die? But then his mom's like, Danny, Danny, come on. You figure you find out that he's just not even like sitting there. 
mm-hmm. you know, the idea of that and just how it was all shot was like very good. And I remember the first time seeing that uh that shot or that scene, I was I was like, wait, this guy, the actor talking about, I was like, he he's still this is him? <laughs> like him for a moment. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so like even I don't I don't even think I'd be mad if that was like say like you know they they cut all that stuff out the first like maybe ten minutes of the movie and then it goes into you and McGregor as an adult and stuff like damn maybe like what if they just did just call it The Shining too and it was just all about Danny at that age and then mm-hmm. maybe like he turns into you and McGregor halfway through the film instead of like ten minutes in you know like I think that could have been all like probably a better movie. Yeah, you know, yeah, because it was interesting also when uh, Dan tells, adult Dan, tells the story of his mother's death and how yeah. she couldn't look him in the eye and, um, or he couldn't look her in the face because all the flies that he saw, which indicated to him that she was dying. It would have been nice to see, see scenes like that. Yeah, I mean, I, I think we we've already created the sequel right there. Like, all right, you open up. It's a couple months after the the first one. He's a kid, you know. We see that for a little while, and then he turns into you and McGregor. You kind of see like how his life is fucked up because of it, and then like towards the last act, the ending half of the movie, he actually goes to the hotel and and burns that shit down. Embodies all these demons that he's been fighting with, and boom, that could have been. The whole movie, adding a little love interest that comes and gets him at the end, like come on, like but <laughs> that's as simple as that. There, there's your movie. <laughs> you know what? Let's get the copyrights <laughs> 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 and pitch it to Warner Bros. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we could, uh, we could try to do what Stephen King did to The Shining in the nineties. <laughs> yeah. Create our own like Doctor Sleep. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that was my emotions about that movie. That's your story and you're sticking to it. Yep. So, uh, the I know that when you before we're gonna I'm gonna move on from Doctor Sleep now, um, and I know that you were working on something with sort of a broadcast channel. Yeah, in your area, yeah, like absolutely. a local channel, and then the pandemic happened yeah um thanks for uh, reopening that wound yeah let's let's (laughs) (laughs) how have you been faring during the pandemic with all this uh because what 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 happened like uh well tell us a little bit about what you were doing and and uh, um yeah it's it's interesting enough Uh, a friend of mine javier had put me on to this kind of um this production uh i guess it's it like it's a production studio out in Connecticut and um, you can take classes to learn how to work a lot of the, the stuff in there. You know, they teach you and then you can come back after you've gotten a certificate and use a lot of the equipment to shoot your own material and they'll put it on pretty much public ac- public access TV. So it was like public access TV for Connecticut. If you were from and lived in that town where this production studio was you were able to watch whatever it was on tv that you uh that you that you put on um a lot of people there in the class were like kind of older people you know it's 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 danbury connecticut it's not a lot going on there if you know people from up there and um everyone in the class like it was like these very uptight like uh hipstery like white people you know which is kind of (laughs) like Yeah, I would love to to almost designate a whole show just on that, like the struggles of being um, growing up. And it's a little, it's much more easier now. Christian, like right now is the is the best time to be weird. Like being weird right now is so embraced. But mm-hmm. I remember first getting into filmmaking and almost feeling weird because not a lot of other kids that like like looked like me was was into this you know so just that struggle of coming up and like just always being a, surrounded by like an uptight kind of like crowd of people and it's such a colorful uh um thing that you love is i always thought was kind of interesting but anyway anyway there was a lot of those type of people and everyone there wanted to shoot like you know 
stories on like the news and like what's what's going on in town and like oh let's interview the local like hot dog guy and it's just like ill <laughs> it was such a dry stuffy certificate class that i had to do but me and my boy javier we did it already i was seeing the uh potential in this because i i of course i grew up watching a lot of like in living color and chappelle show so i was like i i have a lot of interesting friends like you who do kind of what I do. So I think it'd be really cool if I could sit down with them because that's what the setup is. It's like a whole set and it's like a, almost like a, like a sitcom. Like it's just like a couple chairs, it's like a studio set and you can pretty much film anything there as long as you match the set. There's different backgrounds you can put like screens, digital editing, all that stuff. So you can pretty much put anything you want on the screen and, and behind you. So. I was like, let me do a show where I can sit down with my friends, much like this that we're doing, and just talk about their process and how they got to where it was. Um, I, I interviewed a girl who did cosplay, and I feel like cosplay has really like grown within the last like you know five, ten years with people getting dressed up and designing their own outfits. And anime itself is just like this huge thing. So. We, I sat down with her for a good half hour, 40 minutes, and we just talked about that. Like, it was a show that, that creative people can tell us why they're creative and, and what they love about uh, creativity. I, I would have a lot of comedians on, um, and the whole niche of the show was, it was more or less like variety, because if I had you come on, like, you would have an interview process with me, and then we would somehow film what you do or what your skill is you know so for instance the cosplayer she came by and after we sat down for 40 minutes to talk about cosplaying I, I asked her to bring one of her costumes I didn't tell her to tell me what it was I was just like surprised me and she gave me like this like little Asian schoolgirl outfit and so we filmed it we filmed the whole process of me trying on the clothes and oh, you it was like <laughs> you tried yeah, the Asian schoolgirl <laughs> yeah and she and we stood next to each other in the cosplay outfit that she designed and the one that she gave me that that I designed. And it was a very funny, very like moment that we captured. Now in between the interviews and stuff like that, we have sketches as well. And a good friend of mine, his name is uh, Jimenez. Uh, he does stand up and I basically told him to uh, about the show and what I wanted to do. So he would, uh, he would write a lot of the sketches. He would have like a lot of ideas. He did a lot of impressions. So it was like monologue from me sketch sketch i sit down with uh, the the whoever i had on the show for this specific episode and then it'd be like two more sketches and then sometimes if we have rappers on or like singers they would also like end the show by doing you know what it was their talent was so it was a really good experiment i mean nice uh, experience and uh we shot a bunch of episodes and then uh the pandemic hit and um you know we had whole episodes but they were like not fully edited so they weren't able to be re released. So it's like we shot a bunch of episodes that aren't able to be released. And it was cool. I, I thought I was doing like something different, like my approach, you know, you don't see a lot of that. So in in that sense, it was, it was disappointing because I felt like I had this really good idea. And I was just about to show the world and then like, I couldn't, you know, so. Yeah, no, yeah. That's a, that sounds great because it's also you, you know, you're not just talking to other filmmakers, but you're including all kinds of art forms. I think the way that you set up, that you just explained sort of the structure of an episode, I think that's pretty dope. Um, and do you have any, like, is that footage yours or is it somehow the, like, do you have that footage that you can edit yourself? And No, it's mm -hmm. like in like we used their equipment so it's pretty much for the most part like we have some things but not not like like a full episode on our laptops it's like kind of like because you we would shoot a lot of like outdoor stuff like we had a segment called like you know like it would be like almost like billy on the street it would be my friend it was almost like saturday night live with two cast members you know my, my friend Jimenez, I would have him do like the physicalities. I would I would mostly handle like, you know, like host stuff, like who was on for the episode. But he would do sketches. He would do like, you know, almost like a Billy on the street where he'd kind of like bother people on, his, on the street with a mic. So we would shoot stuff like that outside the studio and we were gonna add it along with the episodes, along with the stuff that you're actually seeing being shot in the studio. So, but anything shot in the studio, that's like, they all have it there. 
So we can't mm. really, we don't have like a lot of access to it until, you know, they find it that we could use this stuff again when the pandemic's over and shit. It is coming back. We just don't know when. Okay. That'd be great to see. It yeah. would be cool. It would be great. So if you, if you were to come on the show, I'd probably do this, like what we're doing, we'd sit down and then I'd probably ask you to bring like footage of anything that you shot a movie. I know you you said you were working on the, uh, the, uh, the dance choreography video for your friend. We would, we would show something like that. So it would be like us sitting down and then, the next after that portion was over on TV in Connecticut, it would be like your project, like your movie would show like following like a short film. Yeah, I'd be excited to do that. I'm always excited to sit down and talk with you. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I feel like we have really good conversations, you know. Yeah. So um, when it comes back up, uh, it, that would be really cool. I'm hoping I guess my fear is that like the momentum will be lost, you know, but I think I'll just push through that. But um you know, again, I've said this a bunch of times, what's really cool about writing, which is what I love to do, is that pandemic or not, you can do that every single yeah. day, wake up and write, write, write. Have you been banging out some scripts? Yeah, I have been banging out some scripts. Um, a lot of the times, too, what I'll do is I'll, I'll do like treatments, you know, so I'll like, I'll just free write and then condense it into like pages of just ideas, just bullet points, you know, and I'll do a bunch of those for like movie concepts because... I've I've told this I've told you this before too. I usually don't do feature lengths because I feel like it's it's time consuming. So I'll take an idea of a feature length and I'll just like do just like ten or fifteen pages of what I would would want to see from this movie. No dialogue, just what I visually see. And so that if I ever actually do get the opportunity to write a script like that, if somebody pays me, I could be like, all right, I got the blueprint. This is gonna be easy. Boom, boom, boom. Mm -hmm. You know. So I've done a lot of those, and. Uh, yeah man just trying to keep positive out here that's good i feel like you're a prolific writer <laughs> um thank you you've got a lot of stuff you got a lot of stuff to show at least you know someone says oh i like this script you got any more I'm like oh yeah i got a whole library yeah um, exactly and i'm just hoping and praying that you know it's just, if i just talk to people or i get to some of these different events and talk just i'll, I'll run into to someone i think it was I, I always too what's what's kind of like cool with being a writer is that even if nothing comes from any of this like i would love if my my grandkids like ran up to my attic one day and was like <laughs> oh like what's this and it's just like crates and crates of just work that was and never they really sell it and become millionaires and <laughs> <laughs> well yeah no that would be cool too if like i died and they ended up passing it on but not even that just the fact that like one of them could be like, oh, shit, like, here's a script for fucking Good Burger too. Let me read this. And it ends, <laughs> it ends up being like, like, dope as fuck. And it's like, oh, fuck, that's too bad this wasn't like made. But like, just that feeling is kind of cool. And that's how I truly know that I love doing what I what I do. Because yeah. it's not really the money. It's just that feeling that people get when they experience something that I had something to do with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The latest film that you that we worked on together which be funny if i well not funny but if i brought that film as the footage <laughs> oh yeah this is a love bite <laughs> our movie love bites and uh I, it was interesting because so you came up with the idea for the story and we wrote it we wrote out the script together um that was my first time that i actually completed no 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 no, no, no. That wasn't my first time. You were my first time, though. <laughs> you <laughs> stole my virginity. No, uh, you, when we did the spoof night um, and the nights like these script, mm -hmm. those were actually my first time, but those were still with you. That I actually completed a whole script with somebody else. Um, wow. Okay. Yeah. And, That's pretty cool. And so then we did that for this one, Love Bites. And it was fun. It was fun working on it. It was fun working with you. Uh, I also felt like you were a great collaborator, even on set when, you know, you're the director, but you would ask me, like, do you think we needed something else or, you know, for some ideas or stuff like that? You let me take the ropes a little bit. So it's uh, it's good to work with people. I think you're very collaborated oriented if that's a thing uh, 
a, a term. Um, I, I, I think, I think it is. And that's a huge, uh, huge, um, nice thing that you said to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I, um, I'm glad that you feel that way. Cause I, I, I like, I like for people to feel like comfortable with working me too, because I feel like the best stuff comes out of comfortability. I think what made that whole process work is because that we already were friends and we already had like an established relationship and I knew your style or at least I think I know your style so with an idea like this I had it for a while before like uh throwing the idea at you and if anyone is listening to this and doesn't know what love bites is about it's about a couple who uh the female in the relationship it's bit by a zombie so it's their process with staying together as a couple as she progressively turns into this zombie monster so what separated i guess that idea from other ideas that is that i that i had is that i specifically wanted to collaborate on something with with this idea so it wasn't like a i didn't want to approach the situation like oh i'm not going to take anything that Christian takes like says an accountability at all like I, I want to hear his stuff because I don't generally don't think that I could could have finished that by myself in that way like I sought you out because you do like stuff like that and you are a really good cinematographer in a way that I don't feel like I am so you know it's not like something that I <laughs> I was confident that I knew that I could accomplish doing it just my way like I kind of needed another chef in the kitchen so again, with our relationship and just, you know, our sense of humor. I think if you don't, if you don't think that you're a funny writer, I think that you like at least have a, a good sense of humor about things. Like I, I would never feel like it's just very like uptight at all when we're hanging out. It's very loose. It's very fun. So um, yeah, I really enjoyed myself, enjoyed myself too. And it's very important that once you visit, visualize something and it comes out exactly how you visualize it, it's, it's a very great feeling for, for a creative. And you know what I mean. And, and this, mm -hmm. that was one of those projects that, that I felt like came out exactly, almost exactly how I wanted it. So um, I, I had a really good experience with that. And you could check out Love Bites online, <laughs> folks. <laughs> Coming to a theater near you post-pandemic. <laughs> Cool. So yeah, no, um, I did really enjoy that project and we should have collaborated on something again for the future. We shall, we shall. I didn't picture throwing this idea. It's almost, not to sound crazy, but like when I meet other creatives or when I, when I sit with them, it's like, all right, we're going to do this now and then this is going to happen a few years from now and then we're going to attempt to do this. You know? So like sitting down with you, I saw like several things that we could do and this is in my mind, not that I shared this with you, but the next one would be what I'm what I'm thinking of right now. So you're kind of in the dark about it. And I don't even know if this is the right time, but like one day I will throw this idea at you. It's, it's interesting to be part of a project and not know what it's about. <laughs> yeah, so. yeah, no, um, I just, I just hate telling people ideas in not the right, like, setting like i would i would rather be in front of your face oh i see what you mean i would rather sit down with you okay and so really talk about it you know <laughs> yeah and that we could do soon we could meet up at a park or something well all right um thank you for coming on this episode Kyrie. it's i like I said before, I love talking to you about film Re i pretty much anything <laughs> it's always a uh, I always enjoy um, the time that we spent to uh, unpack whatever it is we're talking about. Uh, I feel the exact same way. I feel like uh, when you're talking with someone that you have a lot in common with, uh, it's like it's almost like a straight road, but like all these different little avenues open up as you're going down the straight road. It's like, oh man, I gotta I gotta talk about that, or like I want to return to that. You know, it's mm -hmm. not just one straight boring road. It's like other things pop up while we're talking about one thing. And that's always good. All right. So thanks. And uh, till the next film that we make. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Hopefully uh, soon. 